I'm Todd Kendrick with Ingame at MSNBC.com. I'm here with Patrick Soderlund, and we're actually talking about Battlefield 3. Yep. I'm grinding until I'm tired. When people are running and moving in this game, they look real. There's finally this, this point that I haven't seen in a first-person shooter that's occurring where something's going on in my brain. Something about that motion capture is alarming and arresting. Yeah, no, I think you're right. When I showed it to my wife for the first time, she's like, she was almost put off east, like, oh, what's, you know, this looks real. Uh, so it's actually been one of the key pillars when we, when we started working on Battlefield 3. We looked at it and said, there are a couple of areas where we really need to innovate in order to make a game that we, kind of the game that we wanted. And we looked at it from a graphical perspective, from an audio perspective. But most importantly, from an animation perspective, and said, you know what? A lot of the shooters out there, they look good today. Uh, Bad Company 2 look great. You know, we have other shooters like Halo, Call of Duty. It doesn't matter which one it is of the big ones. They all look great, but they're not really there yet in terms of animation and visual fidelity. Everything that you shoot at or that you hit something with, you want it, you want it to be destructible in, in, in the real sense, so to say. So when you play the game down here, if you get into the subway, you can shoot out. All the lights are dynamic. When you shoot them out, it gets dark. You know, all the windows, everything can be destroyed. I did get to play a multiplayer match of Battlefield 3, and I have to say I was very impressed with the gameplay and how much the graphics added to the experience. It's really intense, the fact that it's so realistic makes it more intense. It's not relying on giant massive explosions as much as just kind of feeling realistic. At first I did think I was doing really horrible, but I was happy to find out that was not the case. So yeah, apparently I got, I got the top score, so that can't be too bad. Yeah, I know I'm bragging, but I have to say it is oddly satisfying owning a room full of game journalists. Obviously, multiplayer is a huge part of the Battlefield franchise, but Patrick Soderlund says their focus wasn't just on one part of the game. What I find to be most exhilarating for me is the smaller things, like, and there are maybe 500 smaller things in the game, like the fact that you can choose to be revived or not. That was an irritation for me before. You would, you would get shot, someone revived you, and you get shot again. Now there's, you can do that. Uh, the little things like the flashlights on the weapons, like, okay, you shoot down, like when you go, go into the subway here in the Paris level, uh, one tactic that we're using is you shoot out all the lights so it's dark, and you equip yourself with flashlights on the guns, you wait for people, when they come, you turn the flashlights on, you blind them, and then you take them out. So, those small things are actually make hope for the whole. So I think, obviously, there's a lot of larger uh, innovations as well, like new game modes and all those things, but for me, it's the it's a combination of all the new small improvements that make the whole. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. That's our look at Battlefield 3. For in-game, I'm Todd Kenrick.